Uh, so welcome everybody. I'm Wilma Hodges and I'll be facilitating our teaching and learning call for today, April 15th, 2020. And um, we actually had a hiatus of a month because of all the pandemic stuff. So we haven't been together uh, since February. So um, our agenda today is a Jirapalooza and um, there's a number of Jiras in there, um, but feel free to add to that list and we don't necessarily have to do them in order. I just, I did a filter um, and searched for feature requests and, and did sort of a random selection of things that I thought might make interesting things for us to talk about. So, um, but I'm not particularly attached to any of those items. So if you added one that you really want to talk about um, when we get to that portion, uh, we can definitely bump that up to the, the top of the list. Um, and we'll start off with just a few announcements. Um, open Aperio registration is currently open and um, the uh, the virtual attendee option is the default option. So we're planning for an online open Aperio in June and um, there may, pending the health situation, may be an opportunity for a face-to-face -face that might be added at a later date, but currently the default um, you know, path forward here is for an online event. Um, so the schedule has been changed up a little bit to reflect that um, we're trying to hit more time zones. So it's kind of the program sessions have been sort of condensed to the mid morning, early afternoon time frame that uh, was easier for more people to attend from different time zones. Um, but, uh, but you can register and review the schedule and everything on the, the website there. And the link is in Etherpad. Um, and the link to Etherpad is in the chat if you've not already opened that up. Um, we all are, are also um, calling for moderators for Open Aperio Online. So if you're interested in moderating or maybe you've moderated at the Sakai virtual conference, so you're like, you know, a veteran at <laughs> that, um, you might want to consider volunteering. We will need uh, a, a number of moderators to make sure that the um, sessions all run smoothly for uh, for open a period. So I encourage you guys to think about doing that. Um, we'd like to get people to volunteer by the end of this month um, and then in May sometime we're going to schedule an orientation to let people know all the details and stuff but the link to the moderator sign up form is also in the etherpad and um, one other um, sort of open Aperio related item is we're doing a new Atlas award um, you may be familiar with Atlas uh, at the teaching awards that they um, acknowledge folks every year for you know, um, exemplary use of a period tools in a course or project. Um, but this year, because it's so um, timely, we decided that it made sense to also acknowledge people for some of the work that they're doing uh, with the period project software um, to respond to the COVID crisis. So we have a Atlas Institutional Remote Learning Initiative Award that we're doing. Um, so we encourage you to submit your institution, tell us your stories, and um, the the winner will be acknowledged at Open Imperial Online. Um, and one other announcement is um, RCO3, Sakai RCO3, that's the third release candidate, is scheduled to be cut at the end of this week. Um, and we're planning for the dot .20 uh, 20.0 release next week. So um, the release is just around the corner for those of you who've been anxiously awaiting that news. Um, it should be um, you know, finally uh, out um, by uh, sometime next week if all goes well. And let's see, um, I see somebody added that we have a new TNL facilitator, yay. Yes, it just happened this morning. Charles Bristow volunteered to help facilitate these calls. So thank you, Charles. Ooh, awesome. Ooh. Thanks, Charles. <laughs> That's You're great. welcome. So awesome. And yes, um, I'll I'll help introduce you and, and um, to figure out the logistics and everything. We'll talk. <laughs> Um, are there well, any what? other announcements that folks would like to make?
Well, we miss all the people who aren't here. Yeah. I had a feeling it might be a light group since I, I think a lot of people are still pretty underwater <laughs> trying to manage all this. It, it is a heavy just, load. I mean, yeah. the people who are here can attest to that. I'm sure every single one of us. Um, I've waited 15 years for faculty to be this incentivized to <laughs> learn emerging <laughs> technologies. <laughs> Never thought it would take a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess it takes no choice is what yeah. it takes. Yeah. <laughs> you will do this. <laughs> Been interesting. Yep. Well, I appreciate those of you who did show today. So it's it's good to, to see few of us here. So we'll go ahead and um, get into our JIRAs. Um, and does anybody want to lobby for a particular one? I saw that there were a couple here that were added not by me. So um, Laura, was that you or maybe somebody else? Well, um, I think Laura and I both did. But um, if you can see my screen, no, you can't. That's way too small. Let me make it bigger. Bloop, bloop. What's that? I look yeah, I looked for the TNL, the TL status for awaiting information because um, we could be holding things up if we don't review some of these. But honestly, um, like effects version 19, I think I only saw. Well, I don't I don't really see any here. I think I put this reuse material from one other site. <clears throat> on the list just because <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfectly legitimate. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah. if anybody wants to say, you know, we really need one of these other to get moving, um, we we could start there. Yeah, well, I, the ones I picked were not selected out of any uh, sense of urgency. I just did a feature request filter and I didn't even really look at version because I figure if, if it was added a while ago and it's still hanging out there nobody's done anything about it maybe we should discuss it and either you know close it or, or push it along depending on whether it's still relevant so um, yeah, so I just sort of yeah. randomly chose like different ones um, but well I also think we should point out the conversation we had I don't know if it was in the core meeting or after the core meeting yesterday. Um, was anybody, Charles, you were in the core meeting yesterday, weren't you? I was there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you hung out after. Do you remember Adrian? No, I wasn't. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember I was there. Adrian um, putting forth the idea that because of COVID, we might want to prioritize issues that relate to the new ways we're teaching. Mm -hmm. yep. So for example, um, the one at the very end, the stats tool records forums activity inaccurately. That, you know, that seems like something that you'd want to get fixed now, now that a lot more people are using forums than ever before. Mm -hmm. And they're probably yeah, he, also using the stats tool more than ever before. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, Tricia. Yeah, I think Adrian had suggested making a new label in JIRA for COVID um, for items that we thought might be relevant oh. to helping people um, so that we could filter for those. So we could certainly stick that label on there as well as take a look at it ourselves. Well, why don't we start with those two? I'm going to move them up to the top of the list just to kind of do things in order. But um, we'll move them up to the top. And then if we get through with those two, then we'll do the others. Or at least as many as we are able to get to and have an interest in discussing. So, um, so let's go ahead and start with that first one, the reuse material one, because um, Seems you remember like that one, don't straightforward. you? Straightforward, yeah. Um, so this is at the end of the course site creation workflow. There's a reuse material option. 
and it doesn't it does basically the same thing as site import when you import from one site to another but it doesn't always work with reliable results um, so it, it's got some issues and it probably as, as um, Laura indicated either needs to be fixed or removed um, personally I would vote to remove it um, I don't think I mean I know for myself I rarely use that and it's just as easy to once you have a blank site go right into import from site which gives me better um, copying reliability so I say get rid of it and clean up that bit of code but um, oh, Dave that's my Evelyn. opinion Dave Eveland has joined us too and Hi, he Dave. says Anybody yeah. else? Yeah, if we look at the conversation so far, um, that idea did get floated a year ago. Yeah. I don't remember which meeting I was on where I was the documenter. I should have put that in there. As far as I'm concerned, that's not a a process we generally use at all anyway, so I don't really have a... Do we know anyone who does? I mean, this would be primarily for people that are creating sites by hand. Um, most institutions, I think, auto-create them based on the SIS, so... I mean, there are some that allow faculty to, to make their own, but I don't know that we they would do. use the... Do you guys yeah. use the reuse material option? Well, it's still there, I think. Let me just check, actually. I haven't... I never, ever use it, and I don't... I'm not aware that people use it very much, and it is one of those features that um, we don't really recommend either. So um, I would say it, it, we would be okay with removing it. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're all in agreement. Does anybody want to make a counter argument? Or everybody's saying, get rid of it. <laughs> Bye -bye. All right. <laughs> and I see Laura's updating the chair. Thank you, Laura. That was easy. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> great. You can you can go on or watch me type. I don't care. Well, you're screen sharing, so I was sort oh, of like. Oh, that's <laughs> right. You want to take presenter and share your screen, and the, and I can scribe. Okay. Let me. Uh... Grab presenter. I, I I do screen share so rarely, and you just you just click once on your name and um. Ah, okay, it... take presenter. There it is. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna share that screen. What I like right. about this, about having this in there is that I can keep an eye both on where we're going and the chat. Right. Okay. So let's move to the next one, which is the site's tool records form activity inaccurately. And um, this one looks like it was um, fairly recent. It was, you know, updated um, last summer. So it's it's not a brand new problem, but let's see. Creating a new thread should not create a statistic for the responding to a thread. All right, so he's saying that it looks like a bug. And it's um, it's kind of messing with the counts. 
So what do um, the rest of you folks think? Does this look like a bug um, to everybody? I, I'm just glancing at it, so I'm not like reading it really closely. It's moments like these when I wish Tiffany was on the call because she seems to know everything about everything. <laughs> <laughs> she would probably know right off the bat. Okay, well, it's, I think this is kind of critical here. Both students have the following activity when they've only created a new conversation, not replied to any other posts or read anyone else's post. And they have um, the new thread, red thread, response thread. Even though they've just started a conversation. So that should, yeah, I think what it's counting is that they've read their own post. But that's mm -hmm. probably not what Doesn't an really instructor would be yeah. thinking when they think respond. That's so right. maybe reading your own post shouldn't count as a response. And reading a thread, if it the only thing it contains is your new your post, shouldn't create an event either. Does well, I think he's all saying it, it shouldn't count as a res if you start a conversation, you shouldn't can't be counting as responding to one as well. <clears throat> that if you respond to your own posts that it also shouldn't be counted because that could be the case if you have a you know if you if you respond to someone else responding to your post because that would be, you would want that to be counted right but i think that would be he he's saying that if all i do is click start a new conversation i get credit for creating a new thread and i also get created to responding to a thread at the same time for one thing yeah, so I don't think that should be double counted like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you should get credit for the new thread, and that's it. Um, not the red thread or response thread, because um, all you did was post your own message. So you didn't really read anything new other than your own message. Yeah, that's that's basically what he would. That's what he would expect. That it would just have the new thread. Um, all right. So it looks like he tested this in uh, eleven and twelve. I don't know that it's been tested recently. In well, there's um, a comment from Miguel that's in the chain but I'm not sure if this is an issue every time a user creates a new conversation throws a th chain of three events uh, don't think this is an issue anymore I don't see any response thread event anymore So is it possible this issue is actually sort of disappeared or the code doesn't actually? Well, well it looks like there's still a red clear. thread. There it is. Yeah. So still, it's still giving credit for reading your own thread. Um, so I think we should bump this back up to critical because of the times. Um, Miguel, Miguel uh, demoted it. And then Alan Reagan. Uh, I'm going to put a COVID label on it. I don't know if it's been created yet, but it should let me make one. Your label. And put a TL reviewed, take TL out and put a TL reviewed on it. Did we do that on the last one? I don't think we did. I did, yes. Oh, OK, good, thanks. Um, all right, so we're bumping this one up, and uh, we've got a new label. So um, we'll, we can let the core team know that that's in there. But but yeah, I agree with, with um, 
at least one of the items is instead of ha having three events showing, it's only showing two, but it still should only show a red event if you're reading somebody else's post, not your own post. So um, I still I still think it's an issue. No events should be created if you're reading your own post. Correct. Yeah, so it should do some sort of check to see who the author is. And if it's you, don't put it into the stats. Um, does anybody know if this this uh, this that draws from the same data that um, the discussion forum tool itself actually generates by way of the stat information, by way of the reads? Does that make sense? Could you re restate that? So obviously, forums has its own set of you know data that you can go through and look at. Mm -hmm. Which is that identical in nature, or is that information being read differently? Um, I don't know that he. I don't know that it matters, that. but yeah, but it would be an even worse problem if they're giving you two different numbers. Well, like um, for example, this deals with statistics. Right. Most of my but faculty rarely go in... to the statistics tool to provide a grade. Yeah. We use the 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 data inside the discussion forum tool uh, to. Yeah, if somebody wants to test that, since I'm screen sharing, I don't want to test it while everybody's watching because it'll probably be boring for you guys. But <laughs> if somebody wants to test it in the background um, and see. But yeah, um, I agree. If it's different, if, if there's a different count in the statistics tool in forums, then that's, I think, an even bigger problem because you're getting conflicting information. Um, if it's not, um, I mean, if it's giving you the same information, it's still giving you more information than you really wanted because it's counting things that maybe it shouldn't. But at least if it's the same in both places, then you know that you're getting consistent results. All right, so are we done with this one or is there more to be said here? Um, do we want to count if um, if someone replies to their own post? Did we put that one to bed or? Well, if they reply in that same thread, like somebody replies to their reply and then they reply to that person, I think that should count. What if they reply to their own post without anyone else like instead of editing the post they reply to it i think that could be still okay because people could try and clarify things you might end up having users that don't know that they can edit their own post or they've been locked out of editing their initial post uh, yeah, I mean, I people could still abuse it but yeah i don't have a problem with that <laughs> this might be a stupid question, but I mean, all of this information is displayed already in the forums tool, so I don't know how hard it is to just grab that information from its its statistics screen. And I mean, it, it exists somewhere already, right? So, yeah, but is it the same in the statistics in in forums as it is here? I don't know. I think that was Dave's question. The stuff that's in forums is great um, for a participation sort of view. So, Laura, do you know whether or not that data in the forums, the form stats area, is identical to what's being reported in the stats tool? Oh, I would be surprised if it was identical. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm saying now. I'm saying that because I've been we've been arm wrestling with the statistics tool for quite a bit the last few weeks, as I think we all yeah. have. Oh yeah. So I don't know that it goes to that degree of saying. Well, it's got to say, red. Uh, I wonder if the stat the statistics tool is more arbitrary in what it's counting yeah. because 
because it's just grabbing you know event log information grab me this count it as opposed to the way that discussion forms might actually be much more you know discreet yeah yeah well i can definitely say all right the student read all of these different author posts and i'm sure site site stats would just say the student read posts yeah I know we really need to look at this tool a little more deeply. I wonder if that's why it was, I wanted to bump it down. Meaning information, yeah. maybe. Um, yeah. I think we should put in our note um, down here. Are, are, are you editing the JIRA, Laura? Uh, yeah, ref refresh that. Okay. Um, I think we should add that we should compare the results here to the statistics generated in forums just as kind of a follow-up to see what oh. it's doing there okay um stats in forums should be compared to stats displayed in site stats got it all right great Anything else on that one or move on to the next one? Next right. one. Next one's a grade book one. Um, grade book comments, add a comment log similar to the grade log. This is another one from Alan. And this one was actually created fairly recently. Um, and, and he's basically uh, observing that, that a lot of times instructors may accidentally overwrite a comment, um, but uh, there's really no log kept once you erase that comment. That's it. You, you're only left with the, the latest version of whatever was saved. So um, maybe there should be some sort of a log or a history that allows you to see what other comments were there. Um, and he's suggesting either, uh, let's see. Could you make that text history. bigger? Could you make that text okay, bigger? Yeah, let me. Is that better? One, one more. <laughs> one one more. more. Come on, 175. Yo. There you go. All right. Ooh, there nice. we go. Um, option one, add a comment history below the text entry called add edit comments. This could include a date, time, person, and comment ordered newest at the top, oldest at the bottom or add a new drop-down menu called comment log that would function like the current grade log would list date, time, person, and text of the various comments. Again, ordered newest to latest. Um, I think functioning like the grade log makes the most sense because then they're both behaving similarly. Yeah. Okay, Sean had a couple of comments on here about the length of the, I we'll to consider that, and also um, that he shared it with the Sakai Dev. So, or, no, he suggested sharing with Sakai Dev. Would it also be beneficial to have those actually in the same drop down so that you saw that someone made a grade, grade entry and a comment in, uh, entry, and you could see the, the, chrono the chronological sequence of those things happening, or does that really matter? Is that too much? Man, I think that makes gonna have a over sense. Trunk real quick. What'd you say, Tricia? I think it makes sense what Dave was just suggesting. Because if somebody yeah. makes a great comment and then someone, you know, or someone enters grade and then you see a comment and then someone alters the grade, um, would it be helpful to see those in the same list as opposed to individual entries where you have to click on the comments entries and the grade entries and then try and you know, have heads or tails about, okay, well, this they made this at this time, but then this at that time, and then I gotta go back and forth between the two to see sort of the chronological layout of how things evolved. Exactly. Yeah. So right now we have a grade log that you can pull up here, and it shows you um, this info. So it would be something like that. And I guess the question is, should that just be in the same drop down, Or maybe when you go here, then you would have it. 
Well, if they were combined. Yeah, if they're combined, um, it's going to make it much more complicated in terms of being able to actually add the comment, right? Or No, you would just then go back to the add comment or add edit comment option okay. on the menu. Yeah, and then maybe okay. there would be a history option here. Like, Or could you put text there to say that they could look at the log to see the history? I mean, yeah. I know that's not yeah. exactly as elegant. It'd be nice to click and the modal changes, but. Yeah. Or it could just simply be another item, like grade log, you'd have comment log. So I have a slightly different question comment. Um, how would it handle comments that are coming from tools? So I think, if I remember right, if a grade is coming from another tool and you change it in that tool, that that change does not show up in the grade log. Would comments work the same way if comments are coming, say, from the assignments tool or Would that would, any would, changes would that show up in the history? Um, well, I think if there's anything, any sort of history created, because right now it doesn't exist. Um, if there's a, a comment log or a comment history that's that's created somewhere, you'd want it to be in both places. You know, you'd want it in assignments mm -hmm. as well as gradebook. So it should still be able to show you the log I don't know because we, we want to tie everything into the new grading um, centralized gradebook mm. service um, and that hasn't been done yet it kind of got pushed back because um, there just wasn't enough time to, to make all the connections um, but it seems like that would be something that would be ideally handled by the centralized grading service yep keeping that log that doesn't make sense yeah that does make sense, especially if we, you know, we we throw this and you know throw it into the future. But if, if that's the direction we're going to go, then trying to lay the groundwork for what that looks like in the interface makes sense. Yeah. So, um, which option does does TNL prefer? Um, let me close out some of these. I got too many things open. All right, so which one do you like? Do you like the add a comment history below the text entry field on the modal window underneath the little you know, comment entry field or a new drop down menu option called comment log? Or option three, the combination of grade log, comment log. <laughs> Yeah, I like option three I'm just gonna say, because comparing that information could be beneficial. I mean, otherwise, you know, what's the use case for going back and forth between the two? You know, or, or, or maybe there is a use case. I mean, from an implementation standpoint, maybe it's a lot easier from a dev standpoint just to have a new drop down menu that's different uh, rather than trying to mesh the two together. So you like option three grade slash comment log, which would be another, it basically instead of this, it would say grade slash comment log, and then you go to it and it would have the score change and the comment history. Is that what yes. I'm hearing? Yes. That, that's what I think. But I could be wrong. I mean, that kind of makes sense to me because it seems like if you're making a grade change, you're going to make it to both the score and the comment. Um, but I suppose it doesn't have to be. I mean, it could still just be a grade change or a comment change because you would have timestamps for each one. That's right. But then they would be, you know, they would be together where you don't have to hop around to figure out, okay, was there a comment that went with this grade or anything like that? Right. It would just sort of be in a list chronologically, mm -hmm. um, whether it's a score change or a comment change. Right. Now, because comments are longer, this modal could get bigger. Um, yeah. So maybe there would be a way to, to truncate long comments Does and it click on them to expand. 
does it just com just truncate the comment completely and just list it the same way that you know there's a date, a time, comment made by, and that's it, as opposed to including the substance of the comment, the comment, or or I was thinking like it would give you a certain number of characters, and then if you wanted to click more, it would like have an ellipse or something at the end to expand it out and see the whole thing. Yeah, his request does say to include the the content of the comment as part of the log. Right. I guess as long as the comments aren't super long, it wouldn't be an issue. But if they're very long comments, it could make this modal unwieldy. Yeah, I think they would need to be truncated. I mean, maybe it could show like the first, I don't know, 200 characters, and then after that, you have to expand it. Yeah. And that's just an arbitrary number, but. No, I, I think that's a good idea. Um, I mean, the modal is not meant to show everything. It's meant to, you know. I think it's worth asking developers if um, if it could be a link to the whole thing. Like a link to the comment? Yeah. So the truncated version of a comment, if you wanted to see the whole thing, you'd click on it. As opposed to clicking done and then going to the actual comment log? Yes. Well, we wouldn't have an actual comment log. Yeah, right? this would be the comment log, right? We're talking about this would be a combined log. Right. So when, where would they actually go to see that comment then? Well, I think they would, could they click on it and it would just expand to show the rest or? Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Like if, if this was a comment, for example, mm -hmm. and it says show more or has an ellipse or something, I could click on it and then it would like just expand down to, to show me the whole thing. Right. Do we know how uh, how lengthy faculty comments get? Well, if they're coming from something like the assignments tool, they could be quite lengthy. So there's um, my concern. Right. Yeah. I think probably, and and I'm I'm kind of just spouting off the top of my head now. I I would expect that instructors aren't putting really lengthy comments directly into the grade book. Um, my my gut feeling is that those would probably tend to be shorter, but stuff coming from the assignments tool or possibly when they're grading discussion forums would tend to be longer. Could students still see those comments if they were go to the assignment tool directly, if they were inordinately long? They can see them both places. Okay. Yeah, actually, that's a good. I mean, that's what I'm, that's what partially. Students I mean, see. I mean, students on the one level. See this, and they can expand. Like, if this is bigger, they they get like a scroll bar or something, don't they? Yes. So we would be mimicking some of that behavior on the part of the instructor. Or the TA. Yeah. So maybe you could have a little scrolling area within the modal. I don't know. I like the implementation idea. I do. I think I, I do like that. All right. So um, we should probably add to the the comments about um, an option three that combines both the grade and the comment log, and um, and mention that you know how we think it would best be presented. But I think this should also probably go to the UX group to um, decide on what's what's the best uh, user experience for presenting that information. Okay. I think, um, I think we should make a recommendation and then it can also, they can discuss it if they get to it. 
re um, reset or refresh your screen and uh, see if my comment captures what everybody was saying. Okay, TL review. Option three, we recommend putting both comments and grade changes in the same log, which displays in a modal window. Long comments can be truncated and ellipse to indicate there's more truncated comments should expand down to show the whole thing if clipped upon. I think that works. Does anybody else want to add anything about like the student view or just leave it at that? You mean the student view in terms of that's an example of how it could be styled, et cetera? Mm -hmm. I oh. think that would be helpful. I do too. I that would be helpful yeah. as well. And we're not trying to do their job for them, but we are trying to provide a sort of you know a direction. I mean, it, it's not like some of us wouldn't be or couldn't potentially be in the UX meeting as well. Right. And that's actually right after this. So if anybody's going to that <laughs> and wants to bring this up, I you know, I encourage you to do so. But um, unfortunately I have a conflict. So I think Sean canceled today's meeting. Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay. I didn't see that. that. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Thanks for the correction, Tricia. Oh, Got it. You're, me. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, I added that. All right. And I see you've got the UX label on it, so I think that's good. Yep. So we've already got TL reviewed. Great. And I don't think this is a COVID one necessarily. So we'll leave yeah, that. Yeah, no. No. Okay. Um, let's see, it's quarter to 11. Um, do you want to do one more or do you want to talk about upcoming meetings and then maybe break a little early? It's up to you guys. Let's do one more. I'm with Charles. All right, one more. Fine with me. Um, does anybody want to pick or do you want to just go with the next one in the list? Um, let's let's go with um, Samago. That might be a COVID one. Okay, this one, the export highest submission one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't know. And I just you know people use it a yeah, lot. Yeah. Well, Samago is getting a lot of use right now. <laughs> a lot that's of people what, doing testing. That's <laughs> what most of my calls are about these days. Yeah. Um, so this one is a feature request to add an export option um, to export the highest submission, last submission, or average submission. So I think right now, if you do an export, you get all submissions. Um, and then presumably, if you're only recording one of them, you have to filter out the other ones in the spreadsheet that you get. So this is saying... Um, that uh, you could choose when you're right. pictures. There's the, the UX, it looks like there would be part yeah. of something in the UX that would say, hey, which what do you want? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a, a click export to download the responses, and then you would choose from a, a drop down. This doesn't and seem I, like it's too difficult in terms of its use case. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I think it's a good idea. Seems perfectly reasonable. I think it's a perfectly reasonable idea. I mean, it, it, it cuts out steps that people don't have to do. Should yeah. it be an Excel spreadsheet specifically or a comma delimited file? In step four, they say Excel. Um, I would make it a CSV. A CSV is more you know, ubiquitous. Right. Well, it's whatever it is, it's exporting at as um, now, yeah. I guess. I don't remember what it is right now. Let's see if there's any tests in here. <clears> so we want to make sure they're not cutting the space to say, make it an Excel ex export as versus a. Well, yeah, whatever we don't want to add. No, I don't have any tests in here. Whatever it is now is otherwise, then we need another ticket. This yeah. ticket should not uh, change the format. Right. Good point. Okay. All right, I'm editing that. Yeah, whatever it is now, and I don't remember what it is. Um, well, that fit very well into uh, it is our right discussion now. for 11. <laughs> All right. Any 
And you added our um, review label already? Not yet. Doing it. Um, oh, okay. I'll let you do it so we're not both editing. Well, that one was quick. Do you want to squeeze in one more? Or? I would. We, we it does ex three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it exports as it does export as an XLS file. Oh okay. wow! Yeah. That's thanks right. for checking, cool. Charles. I didn't cool. want to be bumbling around looking for uh, something to export. So. <laughs> um, all right. Cool. Uh, let's see. Let's the one we skipped. Let's um. Let's talk about that one. That's the pop-up. And I saw this one and I thought, you know, that pop-up bothers me too. Um, the uh, the pop-up that you get when you leave the student review mode, um, it says unreleased grades and other students' data will become visible. And that always worried me, particularly when I hadn't seen it before, because I'm like, is this going to release grades to students? You know, the first time I saw it. And then I figured out that that's not really what it meant. It just meant if the student ah. is standing over your shoulder, that they would then be able to see the stuff in the, you know, on the screen. But it's not releasing grades to them that they haven't seen yet. But I think it's a little big. What a terrible yeah. message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's but I, I tell you what, I can see some faculty who are very unfamiliar and start using that thing and thinking, oh, is this, is this how you release the grades? You know, uh, you know, I'm, but maybe the wording needs to be changed. Yeah, so that's why I thought this one would be good for us to talk about, because we could definitely come up with a better way to say this. <laughs> I don't think the current message conveys uh, the intended action here. Is viewable a better word than visible? No. The whole yeah. thing is no. not, it doesn't convey what is meant at all. Yeah. Well, if you were leaving student review mode and going into an instructor mode, wouldn't you assume that data would be visible? You I mean, don't even need this message to be visible. Is it? I guess the reason they added student review mode, if I recall the, the story, was that they had um, done some user testing with faculty that would use it to, um, to show students something on the screen. So the student is standing right next to the instructor looking at their screen um, yeah. to review something um, to do with their grades. And because of FERPA, obviously, they didn't want them seeing other student data in the background. Mm -hmm. So they decided to blur out the background because I guess faculty were physically putting pieces of paper up on their monitors to like hide areas of the screen. Um, so they're like, we can do this electronically. Um, so that was, I believe, the reasoning for the student review mode. Um, but I, I do think this message, it, if you want to warn people, fine, but I think the message is, is bad. Mm -hmm. You are cool. returning to all student view mode? You're about to leave student review mode. Um, you are returning to. Instead of about to leave, how about you are about to return to full instructor view mode? Yeah, I like that. You're about to return to instructor view mode. That you are returning. Sense. You are returning to instructor view mode. I'm just trying to. Yeah. I like that. Hey, does like instructor that. view? Wait, hang on a second. Does instructor view mode um, confuse people because we have an instructor view site as thing? In other words, I get what we're getting at, but does the language use? confuse those two things? Well, I don't think it says instructor view know. mode at the top. It just said, it just says exit view when you're leaving the student or the TA view. Well, it says ex exit student view or exit TA view, doesn't it? No, I think this, I, this I, is if... It, it doesn't say go to instructor view. It just says exit whatever that's right. view. That's right. But, but that's not what this message is coming up from, is it? No, but it, it wouldn't be confused no. with that because that, that's not what yeah. that button says. Yeah, I mean, right. I'm, just trying to, I'm, just try, I'm trying to sort of think more broadly about sort of what we're doing as opposed to just coming up with some language. All right. So here is instructor review mode. 
And so everything is blurred out. And then when you go back to this, you're not actually exiting anything. You just click. Mm. And then you get this little this pop up. Message. Would we make reference <laughs> to going back to the grade summary tab? But you're not necessarily oh not necessarily okay. because you could be hitting the close button, right? Yeah. I never I never hit that grade summary. I've have no idea what it is. That it's shows all grades, instructor. even even things that aren't released to the student. Yeah, right. it's the instructor view basically. <laughs> so it's not exactly the same as clicking the X in the upper right hand corner. Yeah, this X uh, clicking the X closes the whole thing, and you go back to the, the whole, whole grade book. But you get the same warning, right? That warning same. came up. It it came up because I hadn't left student view oh, yet. No, oh, so if no. I'm just so, on the grade summary, and I click here, then I don't get the message. And if you if, go to student if I go review, to, to here, and then I click, it gives me the message because if uh, I were to continue, then I would see everybody's grades. Ah. So it's meant to say, hey, you're about to show the rest of the class on your screen. Um, yeah. I think the whole thing's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we don't need any message. I think we just have one student per course. <laughs> <laughs> and then problem solved. <laughs> yeah, that's like using Zoom to proctor and jumping back and forth in yeah. different breakout rooms. Uh. For 50 students, sure, why not? 50 breakout rooms. Yeah. Um, I, I liked, if we don't get rid of um, the, the thing altogether, I liked um, the one Tricia had proposed, that you're returning to instructor <laughs> view. Yeah. Would we just say about to return to instructor view or instructor view mode? What's the difference? I mean, I, mode I, is just an extra word. Yeah. yeah, I would leave the word mode off. I mode would almost too. sounds like it's too kludgy. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Let's go with that for now. Yeah. Okay. Maybe someday down the road we can get rid of it entirely, but who knows? Oh, they actually suggested some language. Do we want to include any of this? No, that's too many words. Yeah, that is way too much. <laughs> yeah, nobody's gonna. They'll see the amount of text and just automatically close it, <laughs> just to get rid of the text. Yes, that's yes. what I do. It's like, oh, too long. Don't read. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Should just say hide your screen. That looks yeah. like it was written exactly. by an academic dean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got through several of these, um, and uh, we we didn't get to these. So let me just um, mark these in case we want to do them at some other. Yeah. Next time or next, next Jerapalooza. Yeah. Uh, following. All right. I really, cool. I really enjoyed your applauses. I'm glad we all got together. Yeah. These were fun. All so right. Well, thank agenda. you very much um, hey. for joining. We don't have an agenda for, for May 6th or May 20th. So does anybody have a suggestion for either of those dates? Do we want to do another Jira Palooza? We, we certainly could. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty of Jira to look at. In the absence of other topics, sure. All right. Why, why don't we just... I'll go ahead and pencil in Jirapalooza for May 6th, and we'll leave Perfect. May 20 open in case somebody's inspired, and if we don't come up with something before then, we'll just do another Jirapalooza. Sounds good. So, all right. Great. Well, thank you guys again for joining, and I hope you're all safe and healthy and not too stressed out. <laughs> Mary, we're all still working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's right. Cool. Hey, Terry, can you hang out with me and Dave a little longer? Sure. Bye, Wilma. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Heather.